Hello, I'm Super Orange Cat here, and today covering Tanami's ratings from this past Saturday, October 24th, 2020. Let's start at the top of the block. Dragon Ball Super pulls in a .20. JoJo Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind Finale pulls in a .18. The Assassination Classroom pulls in a .18. Black Clover at a .17. The Fire Force Season 1 Finale at a .14. Ship it in at a point one three, and Demon Slayer closes out the block at a point one four. Overall, you might note these ratings are actually higher than last week, albeit, I mean, that's a bit of an asterisk to it because considering the circumstances last week with everything being pushed back an hour and Black Clover being off the block, you were gonna get lower ratings, you were gonna get a weird situation, you know, because a lot of people who tuned in and just saw Killer Mike and were like, well, this is not Tanami, just tuned out. You know, and some of those people did tune back in this week. We have about, like, 300, 400 point increases across the board, mostly. However, one big problem from before then has still persisted, and that is the fact that Dragon Ball Super is really letting down the block as a lead-in. Dragon Ball Super, in its initial run, was consistently over 0.3. I think only once or twice it nearly even only even got close to being 0.20 low. And that's what helped Tanami so much over the past couple years was just how steady it was in being a highly rated show on the block. And it would always be like top 10 in cable premieres for the night. By comparison, uh, this past Saturday, the highest rated cable premiere from Tanami was 30th. And that actually wasn't even the finale of Golden Wind. That was Assassination Classroom. And that's the thing. If Assassination Classroom had been on at any other, like, time in recent history in Tanami, and given an actual lead-in that isn't a rerun, we could be talking about it as being like the standout show for the block in this like diamond hit in the rough. Because it does have the numbers, relative numbers to other shows to show it. I mean, if you if you told me that, well, A, JoJo's Bizarre Adventures finale would be the second show in the block, that would have been surprised by that. And I would have been even more surprised if you said, oh yeah, the, the show that followed it actually built on it. And you might be like, well, they're both at 8.18, that's the same. Yeah, but at Showbuzz Daily, if you look at the actual standings, they don't exactly break it down into thousandths, but they do list four shows that have equivalent to 100th numbers, which ones technically had higher numbers. And Assassination Classroom was 30th, and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure was actually 31st. So by a very, very slim margin, Assassination Classroom outrated and built on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And again, that's just really interesting. However, one more note here. There are like nine different Saturday cable programs with a .18. And these two were actually towards the bottom of the .18. That means that more likely not, they were actually closer to a .17 than a .19. So again, that kind of also helps just to show how disappointing this overall was. And like I said a few weeks ago, I think the current barometer for determining how good adult, how good a Cartoon Network or rather Toonami is doing is the sheer number shows at or above a point two zero. I said the 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 break even point is usually two shows. If two shows hit a point two zero, that's an all right week. If three shows do it, that's a great week. And if one or none do it, then that's a subpar week. And this week we had one exactly at point two zero. You know, and the the reason why that's such a barometer is if if the high point is that low, then regardless of the retention, which that's one thing I'll give here. The retention this week, at least through Black Clover, is very good. From the first show to the fourth show, you only lose 300 total. And you have from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Sessions of Custom, that slight buildup, and then only Black Clover, only dropping one one hundredth. And it's also, you can kind of say it's a finale of Black Clover, considering it is leaving the block, and we probably won't see it again until at least the next year, considering how the schedule is shaping up. And again, Fire Force can be an interesting note too, because this was the season one finale, and on November 7th, we will be getting the premiere of season two, which initially was supposed to be this past Saturday when it was announced a few months ago, but some issues with Fire Force being dubbed and the fact that we are having a Halloween marathon this year has pushed things back a bit. Two weeks. And again, ship it in, you really can't say much. It's it's going to be here until we're all dead. And then you have Demon Slayer, which is going to be here another 20-something weeks. I'll be considering it built on Shippuden. Maybe you flip-flop that ahead of Shippuden. Because it feels like it is a stronger rerun at this point. 
Naruto's here just to fill up space. Demon Slayer, I mean, it is a rerun, but I feel like he can milk a little bit out of it, considering just how absolutely a juggernaut it is still. And I think, like, the Demon Slayer movie, like, a week or two came out in Japan, and it brought in, like, $44 million opening weekend, which, considering how the Japanese film market is notably slower than the, smaller than the U.S., that's actually a very good opening weekend right there. And shows that at least in Japan, it's still a very, very strong brand. And it looks like it is going to be like the next My Hero Academia in terms of it's going to be a merchandising merchandising giant. It's going to have crossover appeal to the United States outside of Japan. And the fact that it's going to be the type of show that it's going to keep running as long as the showrunners, as long as, enough, as long as there's enough material and as long as the showrunners want to keep doing it, they're going to get the green light. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. Totally don't have the coof. <coughs> Sorry. Yikes. A little bit came up on me there. I'm not going to edit that out. Screw that. And yeah. And another interesting thing is, I noted on Twitter earlier, because I also look at, I don't just look at Tanami's ratings, I look at general Adult Swim ratings. And Sunday, if you know, then Sunday, two days ago, was the season five premiere of the Eric Andre show. Now, why is this notable? Well, Eric Andre's show hasn't aired a new episode in four years, which is pretty interesting. And it's had this, like, and I, in my opinion, it is the second biggest brand, Toonami, not Toonami. Adult Swim has, other than Rick and Morty. I'm just looking at stuff that's crossed over outside of, like, the framing of Adult Swim and kind of become its own cultural thing. Like, if you talk to a person who, didn't, who doesn't watch Adult Swim, talk to them about, like, general, like, culture and stuff, you'll be like, Talk about Rick and Morty. They, they probably know, at least are aware of what Rick and Morty is. And the only other thing from Adult Swim, at least right now, where I feel like you could talk to someone and they might know who it is, is Eric Andre, just because of just how much of an appeal he has and how he's really spread outside of Adult Swim. And especially, Pops even more famously, his co-host, which will no longer be the co-host as of the second, after the second episode of this season, Hannibal Burris, you know. And... And what's notable about it is it rated horribly. I was expecting 0 0.25, 0 0.26. It was that the midnight, the midnight slot on Adult Swim is the marquee slot. That's like on network TV, the 8 p.m. slot. People want to watch that slot. That's when the most eyeballs are on the screen. It only got a 0 0.12. As a barometer, it lo rated lower than Nardo Shippuden, which aired three, three hours later on a less favorable night. Like, that's just horrible, you know? And it's just, like, really raises these questions, like, and I thought, and they promoted, they promoted this all over the place. They promoted Eric Andre over the place. Just like last week, they promoted Holy Callum of all over the place, and no one wanted to watch it. So it really raises these questions. Is Adult Swim as relevant as it used to be? Now, maybe someday, perhaps someday soon, I'll make a video kind of talking about my theory about this. Because, look, this is a video about Tanami's ratings, and I've already gone so far, of course. But really, I can make a whole talk about 10 minutes about just how Adult Swim has lost the cultural zeitgeist, you know? And Cartoon Network in general, too. But again, that's another topic for another day. Back to Tanami. So, next week, next Saturday night, is Halloween night. And, you know, Tanami is not going to pass up the chance to do another marathon. Usually, they do a marathons because they expect low-rated nights, and they just want filler material. But honestly, I think this year they just want filler material for the sake of not having to pay as much for shows. So, what's the most Halloween-themed show they have that they still have the rights to? That is very easily The Promised Neverland, which we will be getting the entire season from midnight to 5 a.m. You might be asking, well, The Promised Neverland's 12 episodes long, and from 12 to 5 a.m., that's, that's, 10, that's 10 episodes, that's 5 hours. Well... You might have forgotten that this is also the weekend of Daylight Savings Time. We fall back an hour, we gain an hour. So technically from that night, from 12 to 5 is actually 6 hours instead of 5, so they're able to air that whole season. I had someone correct that for me on a post I made a couple of weeks ago, I think a video. I think the video where I did mention the Promised Neverland given that marathon, or thanks to the person who corrected me on that. And again, that's going to be interesting. And... And I'm on board with it. Like I, I have made it very public that The Promised Neverland is my favorite show that's ever aired on Toonami. And I can go into all the reasons why. It's it's almost a perfect show. It, nothing is perfect. It is almost a perfect show, in my opinion. But again, there's one question mark that remains to be seen from it. Considering that, 
you have fire force, you have that momentum from the end of the season. You're going to delay that a week to get to the next season. It's one of those things I think a lot of people will be tuning in next week like, well, that's the end of the season. The next season starts next Saturday. And they tune in and then they see like, see like, you know, Ray being an a-hole to Emma. That's basically what you're going to get. And a lot of people are going to be confused and be like, well, I guess they didn't get the rights to the second season. Because that's one thing a lot of people, especially like the Toonami community, don't understand is the fact that a lot of people who watch Toonami just casually watch Toonami. They don't follow all the news of Toonami. They don't know about all the Twitter posts that they make. They don't know about all the little schedule changes. Usually for most people, the first place they learn a schedule is by tuning in to Toonami and noticing that the shows are in a different order. That's how most people figure it out. That's why usually when we get new schedules, we have brief drop-offs in the ratings for weeks that slowly come back up. You have people who are like, oh, this isn't my show, and they just tune out. And then they like next week or two, they tune in and then they figure out which slot the show they want to watch is on, and then they adjust to watching at that slot, you know. And again, and that's just that's just how it's gonna be. I'll be if there's very minimal schedule changes. Also, that's me interesting. You also get sword on lines coming back. That's gonna be the straight substitution for Golden Wind here, which does bring up the fun fact that there's been exactly two dub premieres on Toonami this year, that being War of the Underworld and War of the Underworld Part 2. And I just find that to be absolutely hilarious, you know. But again, I've gone on for way too long, and I've gone on tangent way too long in this video. Some of you might like it, but I mean, I think there's going to be others who are just completely turned off by it, and they've already, already stopped watching the video at this point. So I might as well wrap it up here. Again, kind of a bad week for Toonami and ratings. Dragon Ball Super, I think, is still the letdown of the block. It's going to keep dragging on. I've suggested in the past, Assassination Classroom should be made lead off. I think it has the best appeal of the shows that you currently have on the block. But what do you guys think? What's your opinions on the ratings? What's your opinion on the schedule? Are you excited as I am to watch The Promised Neverland next weekend on Toonami? What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? Leave your comments down below. If you like this video, if you want more Toonami... Insane ramblings like this, please like, please comment, and please subscribe. I am Super Orange Cat, and that is all.